Hello, in this uh, video for PHP 2, we're going to create a simple search form working with databases that we've created in earlier exercises. What I'm looking for is a search result that shows the employee ID, the first and last name. I can also search for a single letter, for instance, the letter A. And you can see I have lots of people with the letter A in it. If I search for something that doesn't exist, I get a result that says nobody found. So the code here is going to be a little more complicated than what we've seen in our previous semesters. So we're going to have the following files when we're all done here. We're going to have first of all a search form that you just saw. We're going to have a user data service where we're going to create the functions that will talk to the database and that'll pass that information to the user business and then we will ha have an include here for display all users. So there's a, there's a design element here in this assignment that you haven't seen before in common searching. So first of all, you have to have a database to start with. A few videos ago, we created a video called ICA8, and it was the customers, and we did a bulk load in the, uh, in the, in the table here. And so we're going to use this database to uh, work with our app. So let's take a minute to look at the goal of what we're going to finish off with. So it says in this activity, you're going to learn how to use the SQL wildcard searches to search for a pattern. So you might already know how to do that, but what's going to be new is this lineup here of search handler, talking to a business service, which then talks to a database service, which talks to the SQL server. This is called the N-tiered approach to building an app. And at first, a user or a programmer is going to say, this is a lot of extra overhead, and it is. But the long-term benefits are that your application will be more modular. So before you ask the question, I'm going to go look for an answer here on Stack Overflow. Here's a student, likely, that says, I'm going to create a data access object. And uh, I'm using something called a DAO and a services object, both. So why do I have to use both? So for instance, I see the controller talking to the service, talking to the DAO, talking to the uh, database. And so he says, what's, what's why the extra service layer? It, initially, it doesn't seem like an extra service layer is adding much to the equation. And so he's saying, it looks like it's extra work. And so here's an answer from somebody that's uh, probably more experienced than the student. And he says, uh, you, could, uh, you might have a simple app to start with, but as you build your uh, features in your app, you're going to be glad that you have an extra layer. So just let you know that the extra work that we're doing now has got a purpose to it. Okay, so let's build from scratch here. I've got my project folder here, and let's start with a new PHP file. And I'm just going to call this thing database. And this is going to be the database connector. So let's do a bunch of lines here that are going to let us log in basically. So I'm going to make a class and call them database. Okay, so the first thing in our database that we're going to have to create are the four parameters to log in. So we need the database server, we need the username, we need the password, and we need the actual database. And so ICA8 is what I created in a previous assignment and that's what we're going to connect to. The next thing I want to do is create a method that will connect my application to the database server and so I'm going to call it uh, get connection. So I'm going to switch for a moment here to the documentation on php.net. So there is an object here called msqli. It's a class and you can see that it has lots of methods that are already tied into it. And so we're going to use these as copy and paste code, basically, to make our application do what it's supposed to. So I'm going to go look for examples on how this works. Uh, looks like here, MSQLI extension basic examples. So here we go. Let's look like a good one. So you can see that the uh, object-oriented approach here is being used, a little different than we did last semester. So if we create a new MySQL object, it's going to ask for four parameters. And looky there, those are the same parameters that we just created. So let's just copy this code and let's put it into our database here. So we're going to make a connection here. 
So we're going to replace these values in here. So this is the local host uh, number. So let's replace that with uh, an, this arrow. And we want DB server name. And the next guy over is going to be the usernames. So let's do the same. Let's do a this and an arrow and looks like DB username. Okay, so we have created an object that is going to talk to the database. Now, instead of using MSQLI, I'm going to rename that as con for the word connection. Okay, now we can check to see if that actually was successful. So we can say if, there, um, if the uh, con, if the con variable, and let's see, we have lots of options now. So if we want to check to see if this connect error is, is set, so let's check this one. So if there is a connect error, that means something went wrong, and we can tell it that we're going to say the connection failed. And let's actually tell it which uh, connection error it was. So con, and let's do the connection error. And let's print that out to the screen. So let's switch back into the documentation here at php.net and look at their example. So you can see that in the first step of their program, they check to see if there is a connection error number. And so that checks to see if, if something went wrong. They give suggestions. What could you do? You could uh, send yourself an email. Maybe you could log the error in a, in a database. You could show a nice page. You, uh, or let's just put a message that says, we've got some problems. And then they have a little more detail. They show the error number and then the error itself. And then they put the exit command in. So that's the first step is to check for errors. OK, so if, if that uh, fails, then we, we don't want to. Uh, go on any further, but however, we could just say we're going to return the connection string or the connection object. So there's our connection database. So that will be the first point of making our database actually run.